this Sunday, March, March 4, uh, 2018, we had uh, events and many people in the United States who are movie lovers would like to watch and that is none other than the Oscars, the 90th anniversary of the Oscars to be specific. And you know what, I watch the Oscars every year because, I don't know, there's a little bit of a charm, inspiration or something like that that hooks me into it. I'm mostly like a fan of movies. Even though I kind of know that the Oscar is kind of like a, a, a glamorous way for these kind of people to self-indulge on their, on self on their, on their successes and trying to compete which one is the best. Even though most of these these prizes are sometimes bullshit, because some sometimes the ones that doesn't deserve to win, they do. So technically, it is all a little bit of a of a scam in one place or another. I don't I don't know exactly how the voting system they do, but it's pretty self indulgent and a little bit sketchy and sketchy, vague and suspicious. <laughs> I just kind of sneeze. But I still really like to watch them and on today's episode I just want to share you my commentaries uh, what I thought about the Oscars of this year. Uh, to in summarize I'll say that this year was okay. It, it was straightforward, not much special happened, not much of an um, impact happened, except for a few things that are, that, that I thought that they were fine. Uh, I will say that last year, that incident from, uh, of the best picture, it was something that I never expected and boy that it was a talk during that day. And if you kind of wonder uh, of all the Oscars that I have seen, probably the best, uh, the best Oscars I have seen, probably was the one when Ellen DeGeneres did, and probably also the worst Oscar season I saw was the one with Seth MacFarlane. I don't hate the guy, I just thought that he did a poor job on on hosting the Oscars and uh, and this one, despite him being a very talented guy. And this time, this year we got Jimmy Kimmel as the host. I, don't, I never watch his show. I I don't have time for it. But I thought he was okay. He didn't do much much special except that most of the time when he when he tries to make the joke there are times in which he tried to push some buttons. I mean one of the in one of the first jokes that he did during his his opening monologue is talking about the Harvey Weinstein uh, uh, thing that happened, uh, you know, the sex scandals of Hollywood, in which it's funny that I always thought that it, it always happened on Hollywood, but people keep quiet. It's only now that they, that they do that. <laughs> but you know what? <laughs> that's, how, uh, that's how money works on them, considering that many people who are celebrities most of the time they end up being divorced or having affairs and all this stuff, so it's kind of not a surprise. But anyway, during this whole Oscar season, I decided to take notes because I wanted to make sure that I am doing things in the right order. Although, you know what, I, I also make some, some small sketches on my sketchbook when I get bored, mostly during the commercials. So I'll try to give it a, a read here with you guys, so, and if I want to comment something about what happened, what happened during that, I, uh, it's, it, it is fun to, for me to hear me out. So let's get started. First of all, I kind of like how it started. It hard, started like this kind of black and white and old news that you that you used to watch in the in in the movie theaters in the uh, well, was in the nineteen in the early nineties, in which it kind of remind me of the uh, you know when Disney made all those telethons saying that this show was brought to you by in this case, in this case, oh I kind of remember I, now that I read it, it was funny because it said that. 
Celebrity Streets fights with Mario Lopez will not be seen. So, oh, I kind of gave a smirk of that joke. Uh, it it kind of reminded me of that South Park episode saying that the episode of uh, the episode of South Park where you're gonna uh, see who is Cartman's father will not be seen today. With, instead, we're gonna see this Terrence with Philip episode. And yeah, it was. A, I think it was a it was a nice thing, even though I just hope that when we reach the hundredth anniversary of the Oscar, it should be bigger than that. So yeah, then we got the monologue, I saw some of the celebrities, I saw Gary Oldman having this humble face in which I thought that he was thinking, ah, another nominee, another loss. I'll get to that, by the way. So, so he began to make some jokes, uh, there are 13 nominees for The Shape of Water, I'll get to that just in case. And then we finally get on the show, which is the, in which we start with the Best Supporting Actor. With, and the winner is Sam Rockwell from three from the three bill, billboards. Uh, what was it? I got a complete. I got the name complete here. Oh, three bill three billboards outside M Ebbing, Missouri. Uh, I wanted to watch this movie. I didn't give myself my time. And funny enough, is that when I was in Texas, I lived near a Cinemark, and I I always wanted to go there for myself to watch it, but. It didn't give me the time, and unfortunately, the time zone in which I was free, I got sick. I couldn't get out, and the weather was cold. I mean, thanks. I mean, thanks, weather. Jeez. Uh, and I'm hearing that this movie is pretty good. And, and well, I have no problem with Sam Rockwell in this one. And, oh, and, and also, at, at the start, at the start of the whole Oscar season, uh, Jimmy Kimmel apparently made a deal and, and a way to motivate others to quicken up their speeches. Because remember that it was always that when people, all, when, when they win the Oscar, they give out their speeches and they took a long time saying, saying who they're going to thank for everyone. Well, apparently Jimmy Kimmel apparently made this bribery or, or a little bit of a deal in which he says that the one with the shortest speech will uh, will uh, will win a jet ski I don't know why a jet ski if if I would win a jet ski I wouldn't be motivated first of all I don't know how to ride a jet ski second of all I I don't go out to the sea much I'm not a seaman and I don't live nearby a beach if you give me a car I will, then I will do it okay then what we got well, what we got then, we got the best makeup and hairstyle, who we got Darkest Hour, which I kind of agree. Gary Oldman really transformed into another person with that makeup. Uh, best costume design, fan we got Phantom Thread. I never saw this movie, uh, something that I didn't, I couldn't get, uh, I, I, it didn't call my attention. Then, best documentary feature is a guy, is, is a movie called Icarus. Apparently, I don't know what it is, but apparently it's about an elite, uh, Olympic cheaters. That's the best thing I could, I could think of. And then we got the first song, which, which is Mighty River from the movie Mudbound. I think that there was a, I think that this movie was, uh, I'm thinking that the song was, was good in its own right. Even though it is again with the uh, with the theme that we have to be more sensitive to the Afro American community, because yeah, I know that they've been doing a big fight. They're still going on. I'm glad that they do it, and the mu the the music is not that bad. Even though I kind of dreaded that this was gonna win mostly out of something that I will that people call it black pity or something like that. I, I think that uh, an award should be worth winning, not by pity, but their effort. Even though, even though I think the Afro-American community did make a lot of effort, that they do kind of deserve it. After a montage of 90 years of the Oscars, then we got the sound part of the, of the nominees, which is the best sound editing and best sound mixing. This kind of became one of the biggest 
coincidental, coincidental mirrors I have seen in my life because all five nominees of both categories were the exact same. They were all the same. I never saw this in my life. Usually, I, usually they are variation between one one and the other, but I never saw that there were that the exact movies are the uh, are nominated in this in two categories. And just like this uh, and just like they mirror each other on the nominees, they mirror also each other in the winner, which is Dunkirk. And I'm glad because that movie really felt like you were in there in in that mo in that moment. <laughs> and and it thanks to those sound effects and sound effects, sound editing and sound mixing that I I do like. Even though uh, in my in my in my personal view, I was mostly rooting for a baby driver because I have a soft spot for a baby driver which it became one of my favorite movies of that year. Dunkirk 2, but a little, a little bit lower. And I did make my review of Dunkirk when I was on Facebook for my personal family. But I'll tell you right away what do I think about Dunkirk. I think it's one of Christopher Nolan's best movies. And I am glad that Christopher Nolan took a movie that it is on his field. Because considering that I hate Inception and I hate uh, Interstellar because they're very pretentious. This this is very this is his area and then I, I kind of laugh in, in a moment where Jimmy Kimmel kind of said a pop joke to Steven Spielberg and apparently the face of Steven Spielberg is like he didn't get the joke I I, I kind of like it I, I like that moment Steve, I see I never saw Steven Spielberg so confused I was like huh? What the hell are you I'm talking about? Then we got the best production designs and, and the winner is The Shape of Water. Uh, the Shape of Water. Another movie that I wanted to watch but it never show on my movie, movie theaters. And the only movie theaters right now at least that is showing The Shape of Water is in New York. But unfortunately going to New York is pretty expensive. And it, uh, I don't have so much time and budget out of it. So maybe maybe if I give myself a time and and organize it better, I will go watch uh, The Shape of Water. I always wanted to watch it. And well, after, and considering that the, that the production design of Shape of Water looks great, it kind of looks like at the base of Golden Boy for some reason. <laughs> so I feel appeal to it. Uh, uh, no, the Golden Boy. Sorry about the Golden Boy. It was the Hellboy. It was that second Hellboy movie, I think. I think. Uh, I apologize. Uh, then we got the second music, which is the Remember Me. Long story short, if people know that I love Coco, uh, uh, then you know that I love that music, too. <laughs> then we got the best foreign language, which is uh, the winner is Chili with a Fantastic Woman. I never saw it, but my aunt saw it, and she loved it. Uh, <laughs> and funny thing, she told me that she never that she w she went to see this movie out of a leisure when she was on vacation, but she never thought that it was gonna win. What a surprise! Then we got the best actress in supporting role, with which got Alison Janney for an Antonia. Uh, never saw it, uh, but but uh, f with those clips, I find it. Uh, I find that she did a great job. Oh, but then the woman who was nominated for for the movie, uh, what was it, Lady Bird? That that uh, I kind of love that clip. I love the clip that that we have the typical daughter and mother talking uh, talking angrily, bickering in the car. But I never expected for the character in Lady Bird. She just opened the door and, and get out. Of the while the car is running. Oh, it's almost cartoonishly funny. Wow. <laughs> kind of made me curious to watch the movie even though I kind of not like angsty teenage drama. Even though I heard that many people are, it's, it's just good. And then after, 
and and then for and then because they wanted to promote the children, apparently Jimmy Kimmel uh, invite this kid who apparently he's gonna play like his old, like his younger self, kind of like this movie uh, the kid, and. And they are here to present the cast of Star Wars, in which, in which we got Mark Hamill, uh, the actor who I don't know the name who plays Paul Dameron, and the actress who played Rose, who I don't know why she was there when she was one of the one of the weakest aspect of the, of uh, the Last Jedi, but at least we got BB Nine. Why couldn't the movie just be look Mark Hamill and BB-9? And funnily enough, still we could see on Mark Hamill's face that he was just there for the paycheck. He didn't care for our Last Jedi, considering that he openly dismissed that movie. He was just there to say, eh, well, why not? It's a paycheck. Nothing can be done. And they're there for the animated section, which is always the the thing that I look forward in the Oscars. Best animated short the, is Dear Basketball, the who which was made by Glenn Keane. I am I'm not very happy because Glenn Keane was kind of cemented in my head to be a little bit of an undirect rival, mostly because when I was in school. An animation school, they mentioned Glen Keane this, Glen Keane that, Glen Keane that. I got tired of the guy, but I'm happy that he won because of all the a animated shorts. This was traditionally, this looks like it was made in traditional way. So congratulations, and obviously the winner of the best animated film is Coco, which I was so happy, uh, so happy. The others were great too, except Boss Baby. I don't know why the hell Boss Baby was there. I'm not gonna get into it because I'm trying to rush things over here or else it's gonna be a long video. But still, Coco, congratulations, you deserve it. You became my favorite Pixar movie and, and I, I wholly, wholly recommend to everyone who didn't see it. No, I don't recommend it. I obligate you. And after that we got the, the, the new song which is called Mystery of Love, which I, I, it was okay. I thought it was okay. Then we got the commercials, and there was this awesome commercial in which, in which they look, they, they kind of, it's a tourism commercial of the Overlook Hotel from The Shining, and it, it was so funny. I really, really liked that one. I just hope someone put it on YouTube. I, I gotta watch it again. After that, we got the best visual effects. And the winner is Blade Runner 2049. I thought, I thought that the one who looked better in, in visual effects was, was, uh, was the one of the War of the Planet of the Apes. Even though I haven't seen any of those. I haven't seen Blade Runner and I haven't seen War of the Planet of the Apes. The War of the Planet of the Apes, I, I, I didn't have time. But Blade Runner, um, how can I say this? This is one of the the first Blade Runner I walk out. I I was watching on the TV because I've been hearing a lot, but I couldn't take it. It was so boring that that I just tuned it off and couldn't see it again. I want to know what's the big deal out of it. Even though I can agree that the, the effects of Blade Runner was pretty good. I think that Blade Runner makes a better job than that awful movie, uh, Ghost in the Shell, in which both are have similar scenarios. But, but man, Blade Runner, I will take Blade Runner more than than Ghost in the Shell. Even though I haven't seen the uh, the first one, I maybe I will give it a try if I if if I get, if I decide to do it. And then we got the best film editing, and the winner is Dunkirk. Okay. The editing was pretty tight. Even though I, this one, again, I rather prefer Baby Driver than, than, than Dunkirk. And then we got again what apparently it becomes a staple of, of the Oscar, which is surprised an audience. Uh, people from around the crowd and the lucky guys, they're, they're gonna see the stars. Uh, in this case, they, they invade the 
uh, the Chinese theater with an audience who were watching leisurely some kind of movie, and then Jimmy Kimmel with a select few, they decided to go with, go in there and surprise the audience. Not as great as as Ellen did, what Ellen DeGeneres did, or the one from last year where the tourist guy in a tourist where the tours are taken to see to see the stars there. And I, I wouldn't mind, even though. I could have wished I could have been there last year because last year Jackie Chan was there and he's my favorite actor of all time. Okay, continue on. I gotta move on on this one. Then we got the best short documentary, which is which is Heaven is a Traffic Jam in the 405. And I think that I probably go check it out because I don't know what the hell is that for a long title, but apparently, the, according to the clips, it looks like an artist, and um, that sculpture, I I gotta learn how how that sculpture was made. That, that sculpture was awesome. And then we got the best live action short film, and I that's when I guess that the movie was gonna be The Silent Child because apparently uh, because I smell an Oscar bait there. Okay, what are the Oscar baits that I can see in this one? Oh, a child that you should pity, a white child girl, and in this one she is a mute, uh, mute girl. I don't, I have nothing against disability, Justin Kane. I have a disability of, I have a little bit of disability that I'm not gonna get into it. But, I think the movie could have been better if the girl was not white and and she came from a from from econ from an economic bad economic place because I think that will be more appealing and also it gives her a little bit more struggle. But when I think about it now, uh, struggles can be in anywhere. It doesn't matter what economic status you are. And then we got the fourth song. Which is, which is coming from? I think it was called from the movie Marshall. That song suck. I know that they wanted to preach the for the, the immigrants and all the stuff, but man, that one suck. Well, the lady was a good singer. The guy apparently he thinks that he is rapping, but he's not rapping. He was he sounded like he was more preaching. And it is a huge contrast on what they were doing. And there were also 10 people in the background. And they're, they, st they were there doing absolutely nothing. They didn't help on a chorus or what was the point? They were just standing there. I mean, but still, the song suck. I didn't like that one. And, and, then, uh, and then we got a small section in which... People were talking about, you know, minorities on race, sex, and all that stuff, and and how they were struggling to uh, to be recognized in movies. You know, uh, Mexicans doing their work, uh, black people, uh, uh, Asians also, uh, one, uh, the power of women in, in those kind of movies, and homosexuality. This kind of, it is an interesting how we evolve on um, being more tolerant in these kind of mentality of of movies. The only thing that that I wish they could be included are furries. I don't know. <laughs> I, uh, I think that's the least people will want to. But like I said, I'm neutral to almost everything. There's things that I like and things I don't like from all of these. But I'm not gonna get to, into it. Then we got the adapted, the best adapted green, screenplay, which is the Call Me By Your Name. And then the original screenplay, I never saw it coming. The movie that won is Jordan Peele with Get Out. Get Out is one of those few movies that I, I saw it once and I think that it, I'm, I'm gonna have a hard time watching it again. But it was great. I am, Jordan Peele really made a gr really great movie, but personally, I think that he is too green to be nominated for Best Picture. I mean, Get Out is a great movie, but for Best Picture, I don't think that it was kind of like, it kind of deserved that. I even thought, even thought, I think that horror movies should, should have their own category. But 
still, I'm glad that he won. He, that was a lucky streak for a comedian who decides to go for horror, and it was his first movie. I am curious to see what other movie he's gonna come out. I don't know if he's gonna come out with another movie. And then we got a tribute uh, to s s movies about soldier soldiers in the military, uh, which I'm also glad I s that I think they were good also. Then we got the best cinematography, which Blade Runner won. Blade Runner 2049, <laughs> that's okay. And finally we got the last, the last song, which is the This Is Me from The Greatest Showman. I like that one, I like that song, it's very energetic, and the woman, she really sings very well. Even though I saw a Twitter in which I kind of agree that it will have been better if the woman could have sing with the fake beard. I mean, the movie is about freaks on a, on a, on a circus, so why not? And then after that commercial break, we got a little bit of a treat. We got one of the weird, the next presenter was one of the weirdest actors ever put on, on, on put on, a foot on earth. And that is Christopher Walken, I and mean, he was going to present the, you know, the best original score. And the winner is The Shape of Water. A little bit aside, I, I, Christopher Walken, I, I love this guy. He has this curious accent that, that it makes him unique. And so I would like to see Christopher Walken in more movies and I'm kind of glad that there are people who are trying to imitate the guy so his legacy of how he talks never dies. The closest thing I could think uh, who, who really imitated Christopher Walken's uh, accent is is the how uh, is this cartoon called Skunk Fu. There is a character who is a praying mantis who he is the closest thing to ever imitate Christopher Walken's way to talk. Okay, continuing on, then we got of all of all these five songs, I never saw it coming. But I'm glad that Remember Me won. I was so happy uh, because I thought that the gospel one, the Mighty River, or This Is Me was going to win because, because yeah, sometimes people prefer uh, one to have powerful message for the minorities or something like that. Even though Coco is kind of more like that, but it doesn't go into that, that aspect. The Remember Me is mostly about remembering your loved ones, especially the ones who pass away. And with them, so technically, yeah, that, I'm very happy. Congratulations for Coco on winning in, in both nominations. Even though I still think that we should let other studios win their own Oscar. I mean, can't we ban Pixar at least for a, for a year? I'm just saying, I'm just saying so we can we can give it a chance to other, to other movies. Pixar doesn't have to win every year. And then we got the memoriam in which most of I I didn't know most of them, but the ones that touch most mostly are is the woman who played Rocky in, in Rocky and Bullwinkle. But the one that broke my heart is the one when they show George Romero. Since I'm a big horror fan and Night of the Living Dead is, is a very classic. And then we finally got to the big four. The big four is obviously we go to Best Director, which I kind of don't know why they decided to put it, at, put it at that moment. Usually the Best Director is the second to last. But... Three, uh, for ever, ever since three years ago? I don't know why they changed the order. So anyway, the best director is none other than Guillermo del Toro with The Shape of Water. And then we got the best actor in leading role, which I was so happy. The winner is Gary Oldman. Gary Oldman, he, I, this is an actor who finally broke his curse in which he gets nominated a lot of time when people say that he... He should deserve a, an award. The guy works hard, and in every movie, even the bad movies, uh, he proves that he is a great actor. That deserves recognition. He finally did it. 
poor Gary Oldman. You should see him kind of like in a state like he just woke up from a dream. It was, I mean, wow, he couldn't even believe it. And man, congratulations, Gary Oldman. You, you're a great, you're a great actor and you finally got your award. Your effort was worth it. And then we got the best actress, in which this one I I agree. The winner was Frances McDormand from the uh, the three bill billboards from uh, it, the three billboards outside Ebbing, Missouri. I always tangle in, in that and how to say it. The poor woman was hyperventilating. It's come. It's almost like she was struggling with her character to get inside of her. And as and man, I, it's. I gotta admit, Francis McDormand is the biggest reason why I want to watch this movie. And unfortunately, I thought that this was gonna be the movie that is gonna win Best Picture. And when we finally get to the Best Picture, it the winner is none other than The Shape of Water. I don't mind. I, I always want to watch The Shape of Water. It's kind of like a romantic horror movie with Gilman and a mute woman. And here's the thing. If I manage to get the chance to to watch The Shape of Water, I'm going to make a review out of it. So anyway, that's all my commentary and thoughts about Oscars 2018. Uh, it was okay. I like most of the winners. I love that Coco and Gary Oldman won. I I think I nailed four four winners. So I kind of, let's see what's gonna bring us this year. I'm closing because this video has is going long enough. See you next time.